Pre-trib rapture moment number 23. Question. Can a Christian witness to the lost in the time of Jacob's trouble? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-4 through 4 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Well, praise the Lord. That means when Christians go into the time of Jacob's trouble, or the Great Tribulation, if you want to call it that, that means that we can pray for the Antichrist and we can witness to people who've taken the mark. Right? Well, according to our scripture there, that's what it says. Giving of thanks, prayers, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for all that are in authority. Who's going to be in authority in the time of Jacob's trouble? The Antichrist. You're going to pray for a man whose whole destination is already written down, already confirmed. Say, well, I don't know, brother. I believe the love of Jesus can, can save even the Antichrist. Well, you're a fool. Um, the Antichrist can't be saved. Why? Because his doom is already sealed. It's already in the book. It's already recorded. The Antichrist, the man of sin, is Satan manifest in the flesh. You can't save the guy. All right? Why would you pray for a man like that? And notice it says there that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. If you went into the time of Jacob's trouble, you aren't going to be leaving, living a quiet and peaceable life. <laughs> You'd be running for your life. You'd be a fugitive on the run and the forces of the Antichrist coming after you. And it doesn't matter how much you'd pray for him. Now, now, why would Paul write these things to these believers if there was a possibility that future Christians are going to have to go into this time of Jacob's trouble. Wouldn't make much sense. You see, if you read the Pauline epistles, you'll never see Paul saying to people, don't take the mark. You need to store up for seven years. You're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. You know why Paul doesn't write that? Because we're not going into the time of Jacob's trouble. I know that's kind of difficult for some people, but, you know, it's there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12 by the way, the First Timothy 2 verse 4 there, remember it said about all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 10 through 12, you ought to know this one pretty well. It says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wait a second. So Paul is writing two different things here. One time he's saying all men can be saved and they can come to the knowledge of the truth. Over here he's saying in Thess 2 Thessalonians, he's saying that there are going to be people who receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And God's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. Well, now, Paul, what are you doing here, Paul? I mean, obviously, the Apostle Paul is very confused here. I mean, he's contradicting himself. He's saying, at one point, he's saying, you can pray to all about all men and witness to all men, and all men can come to the knowledge of the truth. And then he turns around and he says, there's going to come a time when all men are sent strong delusion because they receive not the love of the truth. How does that work out? Brother, the whole Bible teaches the same thing. That's going to be what every post-tribber believes. Every post tribber believes that, that the whole Bible says the same thing. There's no dispensations. There's no division. Nothing. Uh, if you study the Bible at all, you're going to see that that's a lie. Just proved it right there. Paul is saying in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, he's saying right now in the church age, all men can be saved. All men can come to the knowledge of the truth. Then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul is explaining this time that's coming after the body of Christ is removed. And he's saying, at that point in time, those people that don't receive the love of the truth, God's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And when you get somebody that takes that mark of the beast, if you would make it into that time period, witnessing to them is a waste of time. Somebody that takes the mark of the beast can come out and they can say, I believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus died for my sins, and blah, 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 whatever, and they'll go to hell. 
They'll go to hell like a bullet. Why? They took the mark. They worshipped the beast. I don't care what professions they make. And you better believe that there's going to be plenty of religious people in the time of Jacob's trouble that take the mark of the beast and worship the beast and they're going to think that they're on their way to heaven. The Bible talks about that they're killing people thinking that they do God's service. That's what's coming. So, my question, can you witness to somebody in the time, a lost person, in the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, if they haven't taken the mark of the beast yet, but uh, if they've taken the mark, no. You can witness to them, but it isn't going to mean anything. They're on their way to hell. Nothing you can do about it. Somebody takes that mark, they're as good as being in hell with the door shut. But right now, the Bible teaches that whosoever will, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody can get saved right now. Man, woman, child. Hey, you're out there today, and you're an atheist, and a Satanist, and you've participated in human sacrifice, and you've drank the blood of somebody else, and you've been involved in sodomy and whatever else. Come to the Lord as a sinner. Come to the Lord in a repentant state. You can get saved right now. You go into that time of Jacob's trouble, you take that mark, you worship the beast, you're damned. No possibility of getting saved. Now, if I was a lost person, you know what I'd do? I'm not lost, I'm saved. I've put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross. I came to the Lord as a repentant sinner, believing I can't save myself. But if I was a lost man watching this, or a woman, depending on what you are, I would look at my possibilities for salvation and I would say, let's see, I can get saved right now by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I can get saved and I can go to heaven. I can get out of this world before things fall apart. Or I can wait till after the rapture, you know, so I have proof that the Bible's true. And at that point in time, I can try to get saved and then I'll be an enemy of the state and I'll probably be beheaded and put in prison and tortured and things like that. Hmm. Which one would be the easier one? You better get saved. You better get saved before the rapture happens. If you're watching this video and there's not been this major event yet where Christians, myself and many others, have disappeared and we haven't been called out of this world yet, you still have a chance to get saved. If you wait... You're going to get proof, I'll tell you that. You'll get the proof that you want to see that the Bible is accurate. But uh, your salvation in that time period is going to be next to impossible. Because God's going to send you strong delusion. Why? Because you didn't receive the love of the truth right now. You better get saved. Mm -hmm.